to make this freezer pop cozy, you're going to want to have a tape measure on hand to measure how long you want to do it. Um, I would say typically I go about five inches. So a lot of times I don't necessarily, when I'm making freezer pop cozies, always worry about the number of rows because I've made a bunch since the videos that I've done before on them. So a tape measure is actually going to help you a lot more because you can decide how long you want to do it. I typically do them five to six inches depending on if they're the smaller freezer pops or if they're the longer freezer pops. But it's different than what I've done before. Other ones typically that you will find on my channel are just a simple tube with two openings. This time we're going to do a pouch so that the bottom does not have an opening. And we're going to use the sock loom too from Knitting Board. I like this loom because as I've said in previous videos, you can get away with using one strand of worsted weight yarn on them. You don't have to double up as you may have to on the spool loom or change up your stitches. Now I've set this at the, probably the smallest I've ever done on, on this loom. As you can see, we're gonna have three pegs on each side and then come back down three pegs. So you're just gonna set it so that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 pegs in the round for this size. And we're just gonna do the simple e-wrap cast on to start. Now taking this off the loom is going to be different than the other one. So again, you do a little slip knot. And because I've got this knob on the side, I'm actually going to start my project on the side. Again, that just is a way for me to know when I've gone around again. And you're just going to do that. Now make sure you have a decent tail. Make sure the tail is on the inside of the loom, dropping down to that teeny tiny space we're creating, because we're going to use that to help us pull the project through because it will be a little snug as it's working through. Again, just keep an eye that you don't accidentally wrap these other pegs because for my sock room tube, it's getting a little loose, so this may move on me. So I really need to make sure that I'm only using three pegs on each side. Just a little heads up. Now go ahead and just do your e-wrap cast on. You can also choose to do a different cast on if you want. You could do, you know, it's up to you. I just usually like to prefer to do the e-wrap. I feel like it's the simplest for those that are still still kind of learning about loom knitting and want to make products. So again, I'm only wrapping the three and I'm going to wrap all the way around. And again, turning it can be a little tricky because we're only using such a little spot. Okay. And we want this to be in the round. So again, I'm only making sure that three pegs on each side are because like I said, my slider is a little loose from the wear and tear. So you want to just kind of keep an eye that you're not accidentally doing more. And when I usually get back to the beginning, because again with e-wrap cast on, you gotta wrap again. Once I get back to the beginning, I will actually go ahead right now, because I'm using such a small spot, and knit it over. And now I just have to go right around again, wrap and knit over. If you want, after you've done a row like this, you can go right back through and knit over the pegs you've wrapped. Oops. As you're working around again, since this is such a tiny area that you're working. Again, keeping an eye on your slider. As you can tell, mine accidentally moved, so I want to gently move it back out so that I can have that space. And I'm going to wrap the last three on this side, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to knit them over while I'm here. And now to the inside. It's always the inside of these looms that are a little trickier to do. Sometimes, depending on how you have to hold it. But keep in mind, you're going to be holding it differently than I am in order to get it on camera for you to see. Let me just go in here, and we knit those over. Now I want to do this one a little different than the other ones, and I'm going to do one of my favorite stitches for this project instead, which is okay that there'll be some a little bit of gaps in it, because again, we just want this to go over the freezer pop cozy. It doesn't have to be as tightly knit if you don't want to. So for this one, I'm actually going to have a little fun, and I'm going to do the figure eight stitch. Instead of doing the normal e-wrap or chunky or anything like that, I want to do something a little different for this one, a little more of like a opening kind of thing. Again, you're just for the figure eight, you're going to come to the next page over, peg over, go behind, make sure everyone can't hear, go behind, come around to the first peg, and then back that way. Let me show you. Yeah. Oh, goodness. So you're going to come to this one, go behind the other, come around the front, go behind, 
and knit over. So again, going off of the one you're on, you're going to go over, wrap around, go back around the first one, and around. I do have a video on the figure eight stitch, so if you need to, make sure you check that out. The corners will be the trickiest part. So again, from here, you're looking at where your starting one is coming out of. It's coming off of this peg, so we got to go over to here, wrap around, come around to the other one, and back around. And again, do the same thing, working your way around. And it's basically creating that figure eight. And then knit over. And I just want to keep, like I said, it's a little more simple than we did. We're going to bind this off differently. So you're going to go ahead, you're going to come back over, and you're just going to work this in the round until you get this cozy the length that you want. And like I said, I typically go five to six inches, and then we'll be binding it off. So go ahead and just continue doing this figure eight stitch for <clears throat> until you get it on your tape measure, using, using your tape measure, <coughs> excuse me roughly get it to about five inches and the reason i say five inches just to give you an idea if you're holding this out and you think of your hand wrapping around the cozy like on this one that is my sample if you look around it if i go out here you'll see that this is just under five inches but it makes it good for like an adult hand to use it and that means it's definitely going to work for a kid as well who are typically who use these type of things so again continue the figure eight stitch until you get it about five inches long and then we'll get ready we'll do a couple more things before we end up taking this off a little different than we did on the other looms okay using your tape measure once you start seeing it coming out of the bottom you can kind of do a general idea using your tape measure if you got the length you want. So again, it's gonna be easier for you to hold. So I got it pretty close to the five inches that I want, but what I wanna do now, because I've just been doing E-wrap, or excuse me, the figure eight stitch, I wanna do at least two rows of doing the E-wrap stitch, just because it's gonna make it a little easier to bind off if we do a couple rows of E-wrap before we do that. So again, I ended it here, but I'm actually just gonna start immediately E-wrapping around, and I'm gonna do two rows of E-wrap knit and then come back and then we'll bind it off. So again, go ahead and just wrap around and then knit over, do two rows of E-wrap knit and then we'll come right back and we'll bind this off. Okay, we've got our two rows of E-wrap knit done. Now we need to bind this off. Now the first thing I want you to do, and I'm gonna have to do this a little different than I want. I wanna make sure this is in the screen, the shot. So go ahead and make sure your working yarn is off to the side. Okay, looking at this, we've got our working yarn here. What I want you to do, leave this here and what you're going to do is you're going to move these two pegs here over. You're going to take one loop from this side. First, oh, excuse me, did I get them all wrapped up? Oh, I missed them. Look at that, I actually missed something. All right, so let me quickly knit these over. I guess I was getting ahead of myself. So I just got to finish knitting these over from the last E-wrap row I did. Okay, so now we're in the right spot. See, mistakes happen. All right, push these down just so you can see. You're going to take, and we got our working tail, keep it over here, kind of keep it off to the side out of your way. Go ahead and take a loop off this peg right here, this peg right here, and go ahead and place it on this peg right there. And then knit it over. Okay, I really have to turn this to do this. Okay, so knit it over. All right. Now take this one that's right here, and I want you to put it on this peg. Move it over one. Oops. Get back up there. Okay, and again, knit it over. Now take this peg again and move it over to this peg. Take this loop off this peg now and move it to this one. And then knit it over. Push it down. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to take this peg and put it on there. 
or this loop from this peg and we're going to put it over onto this peg. And we're going to knit it over. Okay. Now we're going to take this loop off this peg and put it on this one. And we're going to knit it over. Now again, take this peg, the loop that's on this one, and move it over to this one. And knit it over. Now take the loop, the pegs from this side, and put them onto this side. So right across from it, you're going to take a loop off of here, you're going to put it on this peg, Might be a little tough, but you're going to work it onto there. Make sure you get the whole loop and get it onto this peg. Okay. Take the next loop off the next one. And put it on the next peg. It's on this side. Push it down if you need to, and continue that to get to this last peg over. So you're going to keep moving one, one from here, and place it on the exact opposite peg over here. Grab the next one over here, and move that over to there. And then take this last one, which has got our working yarn on it and move it over to here. You still got your working tail, that's fine. Now go ahead and bind all these off. Or not bind them off, sorry. Go ahead and knit these off. Knit over, knit over. We got our two loops. Knit over, knit over, and knit over. Now taking your working yarn, which is here, we're gonna bind off these pegs now. So what we're going to do now is you're just going to simply grab your working yarn, push these down all your way, knit one, knit it over, move it over. It's kind of like a crochet bind off, but we're only going to do one in between. Knit over, rewrap one more time, knit over, move over. Knit over, rewrap one more time, knit over, move over, knit over, rewrap one more time, knit over. Move it on to the last peg, knit it over, cut yourself a working tail. I got a little tail here. Grab yourself a crochet hook and place this loop onto your crochet hook, pull it through the project. And now all you're going to do, because again this is just pouch, we're going to bring this all the way through and give it a knot. and that should make it snug because we got this working tail and we got the original tail we can actually tie them together like I said you can decide to hide this on the inside but you can actually use it to your advantage what I like to do is I like to tie the beginning tail and this tail together because what that's going to create is something for it to hang off of so after a child is done using this whoever's done using it they can hang it up on a hook if it's got the string so it can dry out so that's what I like to do about keeping those. So either hide it on the inside if you don't want it, you'd hide it on the inside, you'd weave this in and you trim it if you don't want to have 
any kind of hanging strap, but if you want a hanging strap, just simply tie these two together. And a little knot here. And then that way when the child is done, it hangs up. But this gives you a nice cute little freezer pop cozy that doesn't allow the cozy to go all the way through because that's bound off. And I've got a freezer pop right here to show you. This is a little skinnier one, so this will hold skinnier ones all the way up to the thicker ones. And by doing a the figure eight you can kind of gently wiggle it in so it doesn't get caught and it protects the hands from getting cold even with the figure eight stitch which has an opener weave to it it keeps the hands nice and dry when you're done with it it easily slips off and hangs up but it saves on using paper towels or using your dishcloths or washcloths it's a little more manageable for a kid to hold on to and again it gives you the strap to hang it up with so i hope you like this and let me know if you plan on making any freezer pop cozies this summer I like button if you like this video and can't wait to see more and don't forget about the subscribe button and the notification button as well and have a great day everyone